goes nothing. Hi, everybody out there. Um, I'm Tab, in case we haven't met yet. Um, I can't wait until we have an opportunity where we can do this in person, but for now, I guess this is the best we can do. So here we go. So welcome to Art Journaling. Um, I want to take this opportunity to thank you for being here. We are going to go through eight um, good for the soul single page art journal designs that I have come up with that will hopefully bring some kind of peace and serenity to your life in this crazy time that we are living right now. Uh, my little experiment called Art Journaling for the Soul. Uh, thank you again for being here. I am super, super happy to be sharing uh, these things with you and I hope that you enjoy it. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to start our first one, and this one is titled, uh, I Have Good Memories Stitched Into My Heart. So, um, you're going to open up your art journal to a page now. If you are wanting to be really protective and safe of the pages underneath, you can slide a piece of the wax paper in between the page you are currently working on and everything underneath. So um, you can even fold your book so that that's the only thing that's um, exposed, right? So this isn't a perfect fix all the time depending on what we do, but it does help. Okay, so we have our paper plate for our paint palette and I've chosen just a few colors here. I've got um, a, you know, a purple, um, a and you know a light blue so just choose whatever colors kind of speak to you right now so just grab whatever you feel like uh, you're in the mood for so I'm going to just put a few colors on my paint palette here and you really don't need a whole lot it's going to be pretty quick this process and then you're going to take your card okay and um, scoop up the paint and I'm going to start scraping onto my page in different directions. I'm making whatever kind of marks I feel like making. Out, you might want to wipe off your card too just so it doesn't get too trashed. Turn this and open it up and try to find a really clean page, which is difficult for me. My rule is don't ever tear out a journal page 
unless you're going to use it in some way on another page. Okay, so we've got, we've got eight pieces. take my scissors and I'm going to cut these. So I'm going to take some uh, masking tape here and I'm going to mask off some areas. So this art journal page uh, was kind of inspired by this summer I got to go on a, a trip with my sisters and my middle sister Beth is an artist, well Jenny is as well, so I have two sisters that are super talented and um, they are each, I mean when we all got together we had art nights and it was was a lot of fun so um, this is one of the projects that this is a mini version of one of the projects that Beth um, uh, basically led us through one night so this is this is for you Betty so we're gonna tape off to be something like a square on each one watercolors um, whatever set you ordered you probably it probably came with a brush and you can use that brush or you can use an acrylic brush it doesn't really matter um, especially for for what we're about to do so um, you'll want to make sure that your brush is all um, filled with water that's an essential component to watercolor and then you're gonna take that water that all that extra water and you're gonna make sure that you get your paints all nice and liquid in that little pan there before you're going to go and apply it to your um, paper. So nice and liquid. Okay. And then you're going to take that and you can just make sure your tape is down. Right? And then you're going to go ahead and start sweeping that color. You can add water to it to kind of blend it out. If you want to get another color involved here, you can. You just have to go through the process of wetting down each of your paint cakes until it's nice and liquid. And just kind of let it sit and do its thing. Okay, so it'll it'll like bleed together and everything right there. So uh, all of your memories that you've kind of thought of that you would like to showcase for this page, do that many of these squares. When these are dry, you're going to have to take the tape off really carefully. So um, make sure that you're kind of folding it over and very carefully and very slowly removing the tape. Because if you have regular masking tape, it could tear your paper, kind of like mine is doing right now. <clears throat> Whoops, that tore it. Step three, we're going to cut out um, hearts out of paper, and so. If you don't have pattern paper, I'm going to show you guys what you can do instead. So all of your extra, extra little cards here, you can 
use for this part. And so you'll want to pick a paint that's a different color, different color than what you have as your background. So I'm going to go with a pink and um, just a regular acrylic brush. Get it wet. And I'm just going to different colors on here. It's really messy. We're going to fold these in half. You're going to take your pencil and you're just going to do a half of a heart shape and cut that out. And they can be all different sizes. book and we're going to start mod podging these onto your book. And so you'll want to, you know, kind of arrange it before you actually commit. So I want to make sure that I have a variety of um, hearts on here and they can be kind of you know, cut off at the edges, that's okay. Um, and then I want my Polaroids over top of them. So I might not use all of the hearts that I cut out, but I want to give myself some options here. So I want them to kind of be in the background and showing my Polaroids here. Okay, so maybe one is on top. Okay, so I'm going to save this one for last because it's going to be on top. And I'm going to go ahead and Mod Podge all of my hearts down where they are right now. I'm just going to go ahead and dip my brush, you know, right into the container, my wet brush, right into the container. And I'm going to apply Mod Podge right on my page. I'm going to place my heart where I want it. And then I'm going to Mod Podge right over top to seal it in. We have our Polaroids and now we are going to dive into how are we going to illustrate what memories these are. I want to keep this as simple as possible because this is not supposed to be stressful so I decided that I wanted to focus on four really important dates in my life. The day I met my husband, the day I married my husband, and then the dates of my the births of my two children. So um, how can I illustrate that through really simple symbols or drawings? Um, so for this part, you know, you can use really simple shapes. You can use stick figures if you want to. This is your art journal. No one cares about what, how perfect these drawings are. Um, so I'm gonna draw them in pencil first on my watercolor uh, areas here, and then I'm gonna go over them in Sharpie just so that they're, they're there, right? So I'm gonna focus on um, first the, um, you know, when I met my husband, and I'm just going to signify that with two simple hearts, okay? So that means a lot to me. Um, it doesn't really matter if, you know, someone else is flipping through my book, if they're like, well, what does that mean? It doesn't matter if they know what it means. What matters is that I know what it means. So I'm going to just um, leave that one as simple as, as that. 
Um, the next one I want to signify um, actually getting married, right? So um, I got married on a really hot August day. And so the sun was shining and the, you know, the, uh, it was very hot outside, but it was a beautiful day, so that's why I picked these two colors. Um, so I'm just going to signify this day with um, just a, a his and her wedding rings. I'm just going to do a plain circle. And maybe I will have them like interlinking somehow, so maybe I will this one like this by erasing that that little line there right so I have my my diamond right and then I've got my husband's wedding band there okay um, the birth of my first son was in May which is uh, the month for emeralds that's, that's why I chose green for this background here um, and uh, so I wanted to kind of signify well what how can I signify a baby well I think I'm just going to do a simple um, little sleeping face, right? And then maybe in like a swaddled blanket of some kind. Okay, that's baby number one. And then baby number two would be the same kind of thing. So again, however you decide that you want to signify or illustrate these dates is totally up to you. Now since this is watercolor, I'm just going to go through and I'm going to carefully outline these in Sharpie. So now we're going to assemble the rest of your page. Okay, so we're at the last part, and this is my favorite part. This is the detail part, and this is where I like to kind of dive in and do all these little details and stuff. So um, I have a fine Sharpie, ultra fine Sharpie, so it has a nice uh, super tiny tip. Um, you can also do this with just an ink pen, um, or if you have a, um, a gel pen or uh, something like that. So this is just the part that I really enjoy so I just kind of go through and I just doodle and make little frames and all kinds of stuff so um, I'll probably fast forward through this part so here goes. Mm -hmm. 